Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are back with another important question for technical interview and that is internal implementation of HashMap. So many of you guys have requested me over LinkedIn to create a video on internal implementation on HashMap and that is why on demand I am creating this video for you guys. So if you like this video don't forget to like and share with your friends and if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So let's start this video on understanding the internal implementation on HashMap. But if you have any question or if you want me to solve any of the interview question, please feel free to ping me in any of my social media handles and I will be providing all my social media handles in the description below. So let's get back to this video. So this is the general syntax of declaring a hash map in Java. So a hash map is nothing but a data structure for storing a key value pair. And depending on the data type of your key and value pair, you will initialize your hash map accordingly. So if you observe this syntax carefully, you can see that while declaring a hash map, nowhere we are disclosing the size of the hash map, which means the size of the hash map is declared by the JVM internally during the runtime. So whenever you initialize a hash map in your program, the first thing that Java does, it initializes an array of nodes of size 16. Now what is actually a node, we will understand in the later part of this video. But as of now, just understand that whenever we declare any hash map, JVM allocates an array of size 16 in their memory location. And over here, you can see that a hash map internally has few of the properties which are called the hash map matrix. So over here at the very starting of the program, the size of the hash map is zero, which means that there is no item present within the hash map. And the load factor is predefined with 0.75. Which means that when the hash map gets populated with 75% of the data, which means that when 3 fourths of the hash map is filled with data at that time, hash map will internally grow its size so that it can allow more data to store within the hash map. So this is the general fundamental of how Java internally declared the size of the hash map on runtime. So over here at the very starting of the program, the size of an empty hash map is 16. That is you can store 16 values over here and the load factor is 0.75. So if you multiply 16 with the load factor that is 12 which means when the total number of data within the hash map reaches this threshold value that is 12 the hash map will grow internally so that it can allow more data to come in. So how it internally expands itself we will discuss in detail in the later part of this video. Now let's first see some basic syntax of the hash map. So hash map is nothing but a key value pair where each entry within a hash map is defined with a key and a value pair. And the general syntax of declaring a hash map is this one. So over here you can see that in this example we are planning to store a key value pair where the key is an integer and the value is a string. And that is why we are declaring this hash map with integer and the string as a key value pair. Now let's get into the detail how we insert a key value pair within the hash map. So to insert a value within a hash map, we use a predefined library that is the put function that is defined within the hash map. And within this put function, we pass the corresponding key value pair. So over here you can see we are passing 10 as our key and technical interview as the corresponding value for this key. And one more important fact about hash map is a hash map allows to insert a single null value within itself. Whereas in case of a tree map which is another important data structure for computer science, the tree map doesn't allow a null value as its corresponding key. So this is how we insert a key value pair within our hash map. And the way we retrieve the value from the hash map is by using the library function that is gate. So over here we pass key for which we want to retrieve the value. So this was the basic syntax of how to insert and retrieve a data from the hash map. Now let's go in detail to understand that how a hash map works internally for inserting a data within itself. And to understand the internal behavior of a hash map, we will be understanding by following few of the examples. So let's start with the first example. 
So over here you can see for the first time we are trying to insert the key value pair as stain and technical interview. Now to insert a key value pair within our hash map, hash map actually performs two activity. The first activity what it does is it generates the hash code for this corresponding key. So let's take example that for this key 10 hash code is 34233. So this is an arbitrary number that I have mentioned over here for the demonstration purpose. So once this hash code got generated for this key, this hash code is passed through another hashing function to generate the corresponding location of where we will be storing this key value pair. So this hashing function will generate a bucket ID that is the index at which the data will be stored over here. So now the idea is quite simple that for this key value, we are allocating the bucket ID 7 and thus we have to store the key value pair within this index that is the location 7. But as we have discussed, this list is nothing but a normal array of nodes. And over here it is not possible to store a key value pair in this way. So over here we have to make some new arrangement by which we can store this key value pair or we can store a multiple key value pairs at this location. And for that we use the concept of the linked list. So in the normal linked list as you know each data is stored in node. And this data structure that is the node contains two attributes. One is the data part which contains the value of the node and one is the link part that contains the address of the next node. Similarly with this concept only HashMap internally stored the data within itself. So what it does for storing the value is it internally creates a node for key value pair. So over here you can see that the node of a hash map have four attributes. Number one, the hash code. Number two, the key. Number three, the value. And number four, the address of the next node. So just like a linked list have pair of attribute that is the key and value, over here we have four attributes. So over here you can see that for this example of key as 10 and value as technical interview, the first item that is inserted within the node is the hash code, which is generated by key.hashcode function. So over here, the first thing it is storing is 34233 and then the key value pair for this insertion and then since this is the first entry of the hash map and that is why the value of the next is null and this node which got generated for this key value pair is stored at the bucket position 7 and the way it is saving this node at the position 7 is using the principle of a linked list and each node of this linked list have four attributes one is the hash code number two is the key number three is the value and the address of the next node and that is next so whenever a node is getting generated over here it is creating a linked list from this point and the address of the head of the linked list is stored at the bucket position 7. So I think you got the basic concept of how internally a hash map stored the data within itself. Now let's see with few more example and few more boundary conditions so that it will be easy for you to understand the internal implementation of how a hash map internally store a data within itself. Now let's take another example to understand the concept more clearly. So over here we are inserting the key value pair as 12 and anindu. So the first action that our hash map performs is it generates the hash code for this respective key. And then once the hash code is generated for this key, it is passed through a hashing function to generate the bucket ID for this key value pair. So right now internally hash map will create a node for this key value pair where the first thing it will store is a hash code for this key and it will store the corresponding value over here. And since the bucket ID of this key is 1, it will store this node at the first index of our array. And thus a new link list got created with a single node over here. And the address of this node is stored at the position number 1. Now let's check some boundary condition to understand in more detail that what can happen while inserting a node within a hash map. So let's consider the next example where the key is 17 and the value is like and share. And for this key, the hash code that got generated 1001 and the bucket ID that got generated from the hashing function is 7. So as usual, internally HashMap will create a node for this key value pair. But while inserting the value at the bucket ID 7, it sees that there already exists a node over here. So over here, there is a collision within the hash map. So over here, you know that this is nothing but a linked list. 
and the simple way by which hash map reduces the collision is it adds this corresponding new node that got generated for this key value pair over here with the operation as insert a node at the end of the linked list. So I hope you guys are clear with the way a hash map insert a value within itself. Now let's consider one of the special condition of inserting a null value within our hash map. So whenever we insert a null value within our hash map, the first thing what it does is it generate a hash code. And from there it generate a corresponding bucket ID for this hash code and that is zero. So whenever you insert a null value as a key in the hash map, it will always create the bucket ID zero for that. And that is the only reason why you can insert one key value as null within the hash map. Now the important question is, whenever we are declaring a hash map, we are not defining any size of the hash map. So how long can we insert a data within the hash map? So as we have discussed in our first slide, since the hash map is filled with the threshold value, the hash map will allow to insert the value within itself. But as soon as the size of the hash map, that is the total number of elements present within the hash map, reaches the threshold value, the hash map will internally grow its size that is it will double the existing size. So initially the size of this hash map was 16. Now it will double its initial size and the total number of items it can allow right now is 32. So right now the table that is the array of nodes will increase from size 16 to size 32. And again it will recalculate the corresponding threshold value of this new hash map. So I hope you guys have clearly understand that how a hash map internally works for inserting our data within itself and how hash map increases its size during the runtime of the application. So it is quite clear since over here we are using an array of nodes. So the average time complexity of inserting an element within the hash map is order of one. That is a constant time complexity. Now let's see how the gate method that is the way of retrieving the value from the hash map works internally but before that if you like this video till now don't forget to like and share with your friends and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview and one more important announcement that i want to make over here that i am coming up with a brand new playlist that is on web development where we will learn how to do our end-to-end -end full stack development of a particular website where we will be cloning some of the popular websites like Facebook, LinkedIn, Amazon, whatever using the React framework. And also not only we will do the front end of the application, but we will also create the back end of the application using the Spring Boot application. So that will be totally a full stack development from end to end. So anyone who is interested to learn the front end of the application can watch that video. And if you're interested only to the back end, you can watch the video and if and also if you want to know both the front end as well as back end of the application as a full stack developer you can watch the entire video tutorial series it will be quite fun and i'm super excited to launch this video very soon so don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you get the notification as soon as i release that corresponding series over here so let's get back to this video of understanding how a hash map works internally to retrieve our data over here so the way hash map retrieve our data over here is quite similar the way it insert our data. So whenever we try to retrieve a value from the hash map, we use the library that hashmap.key where we pass the corresponding key value. So internally for retrieving the value also, it first calculate the hash code for this key. So over here you can see that for the key 12, it again generates the hash code as 2003. And while it is passed through the hashing function, the bucket ID that got generated for this key is 1, which is same as the value that we have generated during the time of insertion. So now the idea is very simple. We have to go to index number 1 to get the following node from that bucket item. And over here, since there is only one entry on this bucket ID, so the node that we have retrieved over here is this one. And since we got this node from this bucket ID, Java will output this value as a response to this gate operation. Now let's consider the second example where we can have multiple value on a particular bucket list. So over here, let's consider the example of the key 17. So whenever we are trying to get the value of the 17, the first thing it does is it generates the hash code and the bucket ID for this key. 
So over here, the bucket ID of this key is 7. So the first operation that it will do is it will try to fetch out the address that is stored over here, which is nothing but the address of the nodes of this linkage. But over here, you can see we have two nodes over here. So let's zoom into this and let's see how internally HashMap managed to get the value in this case. So the first thing that the HashMap will do is it will go to the bucket ID of that table and it will face the complete leaked list that is the list of the node that is stored on this bucket number. And then it will check the hash code of the 17 that is 1001 with the first item of the node. For the first time, it will check that whether the hash code matches with the hash code of this node or not. So in this case, it doesn't match. So it will iterate to the next node on this linked list that is the second node over here. And in this case, you can see that the hash code of this 17 matches with the hash code of this new node. Now, since the hash code of this node matches over here, the next thing that it will check is it will check the key value of this node with the corresponding key value that we have passed in the parameter of the gate functionality. So it will compute the equals function on this key value. So if both the hash code as well as the key value matches with this node and then it will output this value for this operation. Now the question is why it need to calculate both the key and the value in this case. So the simple answer to this question is that another key can also have a same hash code. So at that time we can have multiple entry on the same bucket with same hash code. So at that time, we need to validate both the hash code as well as the key to get the exact key value node on that case. And that is why both the hash code as well as the key is matched during the retrieval process. So I hope you guys have thoroughly understand the internal implementation of hash map that how we insert our data within the hash map how internally our hash map grow its size depending on conditions and how we can retrieve a value from the hash map. So if we talk about the complexity of the hash map, you can see the average complexity of the hash map is order of one, that is the constant time. But in the worst condition, the complexity of the program is order of n. And the reason for this is since we are creating a linked list on a particular bucket, so it might can happen that there are n entries within a particular bucket ID. And at that time, to iterate from the first index to the last, the complexity of that algorithm of finding the node within the linked list will be order of n. And that is why the worst case complexity of a hash map of adding and retrieving a value is order of n. So I hope you guys have thoroughly understand this video and if so, please do like and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So let's see you on the next video where we will be discussing another important problem for technical interview. So let's see you on the next video. Thank you.